So it's near the end of winter in Victoria, Australia, and uh, it's one of the rare nice days, absolutely beautiful day. We're also in uh, COVID lockdown, so we're stuck at home, the weather's usually terrible, so I thought I'd grab a chance today, when it's nice and sunny, to uh, get out. I've ridden out on my little uh, modified 9 bot Max scooter to do a review on the Canon P. Okay, to put a film in the uh, Canon P, I'm going to be using some Ilford Delta 400, black and white. Now the latch to open the side is here, but there's this little safety clip getting in the way. So we have to uh, get rid of that, and then we can use this to pop the back open. Once the back's open, we're okay for the film. Very uh, easy way of loading, lift this shaft out the way, put the canister in, close the shaft down, drag the film across, find the slot in the spool, put some film through, maneuver the film so that it's now in the take-up spool, cogs are attached, close the back, Wind it on a couple of times so that you uh, end up on zero. Don't forget to lock this again so that this can't pop open. Done. Okay, so here's the shutter speed test. It's on one thousandth of a second. Probably too quick to see. Down to five hundredths. Winds very nicely. 250th, 125th, 60th, 30th, 15th, 8th, 1 of a second, Half a second, one second, and B, for as long as I want, there you go, all present and correct. G'day, the last review I did was on the Konica 2A and it was a camera that was full of lots of things to do on it very complex uh, very involved camera to take a photo with and that can be very delightful but quite slow so i've got another early rangefinder here the canon p brought out in 1959 was uh manufactured and on sale for about three years they sold about 90,000, a bit below 90,000 of these units in that time. And it's quite different. <laughs> it is a rangefinder still. One of the differences between this and the Konica 2A is this has removable lenses. So when I reviewed the Konica 2A, I reviewed it with the lens that came with it because that's what you got. Whereas this camera, you can put any 39mm screw mount lens on this body so it would be unfair to review the camera by using a lens because you can change lenses some lenses are good some are bad some are very expensive some are very cheap you can't review the camera by the lens when you can just swap the lens photos from a camera like this are dependent on the lens 
not the light box body. So I will be reviewing the body of the camera because that's what's relevant. Okay, the Konica 2A was a camera that was very involved to use. To take a photo, you had to spend time doing all sorts of things to it uh, before you even click the shutter. The Canon P, on the other hand, is the other end of the scale. Some people say the best cameras to use are the ones that don't get in your way. And a lot of people hold up the Leicas, like say the, uh, the M3, as a camera that doesn't get in the way of taking photos. It's built in such a way that there's only a few things you can do on it that are needed to do on it. And they're very intuitive, they're easy, and you don't have to keep checking everything on the camera before you take the photo. Well, the Canon P is like the Leica M3. <laughs> now, I know some Leica people will be watching this video and I might be uh, pushing some buttons. I'm just telling it like it is, okay? <laughs> The Canon P came out about in the middle of the run of the Leica M3. It was built for 13 years and sold about a quarter of a million or so bodies. This came out for three years and sold nearly 90,000 bodies. So there are a lot more Leica M3s around than Canon P's, but on an annual sales basis, the Canon P outsold the M3. Now that doesn't prove anything here or there because the price differences was uh, quite staggering. People who could afford the Canon P a lot of them couldn't afford the M3, so that affected sales. On the other hand, a lot of professionals used the M3 and didn't bother with the Canon P because they could afford to buy the more expensive body. So even with the price difference, the two are still compared at the time and also now. If you can't afford an old Leica M3, why not buy a Canon P? So as I go through the features of the Canon P, there will be times when I uh, talk about the similarities with the Leica M3 because the two were sort of pitted against each other. So as a camera to use, one that doesn't get in your way when you're taking photos, the Canon P is absolutely wonderful. It feels nice and solid because it is nice and solid. Like the uh, Leica M3, it's made of pretty good materials, although different but it's made to very high manufacturing standards. And uh, let's get this right out of the way <laughs> from the start. There's a lot of Leica M3s around because they last a long time. They're really well made. Same with this. <laughs> There's quite a few Canon P's around that are still going incredibly strong because it's very well made. So the argument that the Leica M3 has more longevity to it is moot because, well, I'm holding one right here in my hand. The Canon P, 60 years old, uh, in absolutely mint condition, uh, and will go on for decades to come. Now I've shown you loading the film on this. If I showed you loading the film on the M3, if you weren't used to it, you'd be wondering what on earth like are we doing? Uh, it's far easier to load a film on the Canon P than the M3. I mean, for a bunch of famous engineers at Leica, I'm amazed that they stuck to such a difficult and unnecessarily difficult way to load a film into their cameras. Physically, both in size and weight, the Canon P and the Leica M3 are pretty much identical across the board. The main difference is in the styling. The Leica M3 has the rounded body of typical Leicas. Uh, the Canon has these chamfered edges rather than the full curve. Now personally I prefer the Leica full curve. I think it just feels that a little bit nicer to hold. But this doesn't uh, feel bad, it's just different. Ergonomically then you have a fantastic shutter rewind, a single stroke. The M3s, they, they first came out with a, a double stroke and then midway through the run they changed the single stroke like this one. So that's one way to tell if you've got a real early M3 or a later M3. The shutter speed dial is pretty much in the same spot on both cameras and both of them are a bit strange shape because they're geared to use with an external light meter that also has a shutter control that hooks into the one on the body. I don't have one of those external units. I didn't see the use of it really. Uh, but the shutter is still easy to turn. It's not a difficult thing. You don't need this external thing, unit to make it any easier. Very easy to read what shutter speed you're on. 
and you have those indents when you turn it so you don't have to take your eye from the, the viewfinder if you're going to change the shutter speed. There's no batteries required in this thing at all. Okay, so inbuilt in the body, there's no light meter to run. Uh, that's an external att attachment if you want one. So this is purely 100% mechanical like the Leica's and will run 24 seven with no battery required at all. The shutter release is threaded. You can get a soft button if, there if you want. It's got this collar around it, which goes from A, which is like advance. And when you uh, turn it, that releases the uh, cogs inside so you can then rewind the film. That's all that is for. So on top, you've got the rewinder, shutter speed, the advance or retard collar, rewind lever here. The rewind lever is fantastic. <laughs> it tucks away in its own little slot and looks really well made. Good thinking there. Then we come to the back, the viewfinder. And this is where the Canon P has it over the Leica M3. Now, Leica users will say, oh, the M3 viewfinder is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's nice and full, it's nice and clear. It's got all these guidelines that match the lens you're using. And I would say, well, yeah, but I think the Canon P is a bit better because the Leica M3 has a 0.91 or 0.95 magnification. This is 100%. This is a one-to-one -one magnification through here, which no other Leica has. So what you see with the eye through the viewfinder is the exact same match as what you see with your eye looking out the other side of the camera. There's no uh, distinction. There's no confusion. They match. So that's a plus very clear viewfinder as well and the rangefinder patch is very easy to see and use there's no real problems with that when you look through the viewfinder you also have lens markings the widest is 35 mil the middle one is 50 mil and the narrow one is 100 mil so you've got uh, guides here for 35 mil lens the Leica doesn't have that the M3 it starts at 50 or 55 so you've got a wider guide through the uh, viewfinder in the Canon P because a lot of people use wider lenses than 50mm and I really don't know why Leica didn't you know, think of it. You have to buy an external thing on a Leica to get that 35mm whereas it's all in built here. Now I'm not saying all this to can Leica. I wouldn't mind a Leica but I think there's disadvantages to the Leica M3 over the Canon P that needn't have been there. Leica could easily have made their viewfinder a one-to-one. -one. They could easily have included a frame in there for 35mm. And they could easily have redesigned their loading system so that you didn't have to take the bottom off and then open this little flap in the back and make it very more difficult than it needs to be. Okay? <sighs> I don't know why they did those things when they didn't need to. They could have improved it. So yeah, I'm not going to pay myself more money for something that is harder to use and not quite as good as what's here on the Canon P. So really when reviewing the Canon P you just have to look at the body and the way this thing is used, it's very simple. Your body itself, you really have to worry about one thing, your shutter speed. That's it. On the lens, hey, you've got your aperture and then you're focusing but you can put any sort of lens on this because you can change lenses. I'm looking at the body of the Canon P and this thing doesn't get in your way. It makes photography very easy, uh, very quick, quite enjoyable and it's built to last. I'm happier with this than I would be with the M3 with its problems and issues. Is one of the other differences about the Canon P over the Leica M3 and most other cameras at the time is the shutter curtains. On the Canon P, they're metal. Now the Leica M3 and most other rangefinders had cloth shutter curtains and uh, you were always warned, don't point the camera at the sun, you might burn a hole through the cloth curtains. Whereas the Canon P had these metal ones over 60 years what you can find is some of them crinkle a bit the metal doesn't look nice and flat anymore they still work exactly the same uh, it doesn't seem to affect the operation at all my sample here has very 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 slight crinkling probably the least you'll ever find 
it's not likely you'll find one with no crinkling at all. So there you go folks, uh, the Canon P, if you can get a good one, grab it. I think they're a delight to use. If you're looking for a camera that is easy and doesn't get in your way, there it is. He made it from 1959 to 1961. Oh yeah, and if you think, oh, he's a Canon fanboy. No, this is the only cam Canon I use. I don't like the modern ones. I use Fujifilm. I came from Nikon. I don't really, uh, when I pick up a Canon, I don't really know how to use it. It's a bit uh, foreign, so I couldn't be bothered with them. But this film Canon is an absolute delight. I love it. But then, whatever you got, pick up your camera, go for a walk and have fun. Bye. Oh yeah. Like subscribe ring the bell whatever you do nowadays and you can buy me a coffee or a beer link below